Yeah. Hello, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl Amanda, the Buzz Artist. Welcome back to my channel. And we are here doing another speed painting and story time session. I feel like I haven't done one of these in a while, and so I decided, hey, let's just grab a sketchbook, do some sketching and painting, and have a conversation. Recently, I was actually putting together a course on how to make pop art, and one question that I got from somebody which I thought was so interesting was, is it ever possible for me to make art just for art's sake? And then I thought about it and I said, huh, I gotta talk about this with everybody on this channel. So what about making art for art's sake? Basically, I kind of think about stuff you do in your sketchbook and stuff that you do as doodles and whatnot. And the question is, is that okay? Can we do it? Is it bad? Well, the short answer to that is no. Making art for art's sake is not bad at all. In fact, I think it should be highly encouraged to constantly practice and create art just because. And the long form answer to this question is, well, ultimately, it depends on your art goals. Are you trying to become an artist? Do you want to use art as a form of self-therapy? Is there some sort of combination of that in between? The answers to these questions obviously produce different results, and thus will provide different perspectives on just creating art for art's sake or making art that has a powerful impact. So here is how I look at it. What is the difference between the thousands of artists who try to share their art but get little to no traction and a famous artist like, say, Van Gogh or Salvador Dali? What made these guys so incredibly special? Well, one word. Emotion. Emotion is one of the most powerful and relatable tools we have to communicate with one another. Everyone can understand what it's like to cry, to laugh, to feel despair, to get angry, or to smile bittersweetly. And the more we as artists can tap into that response with others, the better it'll turn out for our art brand and our career as artists. Now, I'm not saying that there is no such thing as an unappreciated artist. I don't, I don't think so at all. I think the life of an artist can sometimes be very tough. You know, you can be working so hard on something and you feel like it has a big impact on you, but, you know, it doesn't really speak to a lot of people. And that, that part kind of sucks. Or maybe you worked your butt off and you made a really great piece of artwork, but no one's just really responding to that. And I know that happens too, and that totally sucks. I understand that. But I do have to say this, and this is from my own personal experience, every painting that I have ever sold was successful because someone told me they saw themselves in that painting. They felt the pain, the love, the fear, the hope in the work that I did. And it compelled them so much so that they pulled out their wallets and they made a purchase. And as much as I hate to say it, money does talk. If you have somebody that really loves your painting enough to want to buy it, you've hit an emotional trigger with them. And that's because people respond to emotion. It's a huge reason why big companies like Disney, for example, have made such a huge name for themselves. So if we think about Disney, for example, when they first started, their main competitors back then were Felix the Cat cartoons. And Disney managed to harness emotional responses in his animation. People smiled, laughed, cried, and returned to a state of childlike wonder whenever they saw his cartoons or his movies. And decades later, Disney is now one of the biggest titans of the animation industry, and it got there in large part because of the viewers who loved his art and the story behind them. If you think about it, a lot of Disney's characters displayed qualities that people saw or related to. People saw themselves as strong and independent like Ariel, or a smart, gentle soul like Belle. People identified to feeling ugly and misunderstood like Quasimodo. People cried when their hearts ached for Simba when he saw his father die. <laughs> At the very least, it was extremely true for me. And it still compels me to spend a stupid amount of money to go to Disney World or see their latest movies. Not that I'm complaining, I love them all the same, and it always brings me even more inspiration. Now, this is not to say big titans like Disney or Salvador Dali, for instance, never made art for the sake of art. Not at all. I bet that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of mini sketches and renderings that can probably wallpaper my entire house five times over. Because, yeah, sometimes we create art just to breathe, just to have some me time and forget about the world for a while. It means something big for us, regardless if there is a big story or not to actually tell. This is really important to note. There is nothing wrong with making art for the sake of art. It's a safe haven where we learn and sharpen our skills with practice, and with just spending time alone with our thoughts. But some artists who want to sell art or grow their art following get a little testy when their art for art's sake artwork doesn't sell well or their posts get little traction. And that is simply because that art spoke to no one, except to 
probably that artist who made it. Art that speaks to no one will forever remain silent. It will fade into the background, lost to the thousands upon thousands of other art that failed to evoke. Look, I get it. I am an artist and I'm trying to grow my following as I do so. My goal is to improve my skills, but to also make a full-time income as an artist. That means I need to put in work than just doodling because it's rainy out and I'm feeling moody type of stuff. I need to strategize and plan out my message so that my artwork can make that impact on others. And a lot of people get confused when I say something like planning your art. Don't you just like have to sit down and get inspired or something and then you come up with a masterpiece? Well, I mean, yeah, sure, that's part of it sometimes, if I'm lucky, but running on just creative inspiration alone makes not a paid artist. There is a work ethic that goes behind it. It's a job that requires time and planning. And as terribly unsexy as that sounds, it is those very things that turned artists like Van Gogh, Picasso, and Dolly into household names. Their paintings deal with lots of subject matter that is captured in their composition, color choices, paint strokes, etc. They all had something to say, and they all evoked strong emotions in others. And that's why we remember them so much, because of how they made us feel. And it's not exactly an accident that this happens. I mean, even Bob Ross pre-planned his painting so he would have an idea of the colors to use and the composition. In the end, it's a job that requires them to think what message their art is conveying and what they want to provoke in others. And see, that's how I kind of look at art. I see it as a provocation. It's a message to send out to others of what you went through in your life. And we as artists need to understand that there is this yin and yang relationship when it comes to art. If you want to make art your hobby, then go wild with creating art for the sake of it. But if you really want to grow your brand as an artist, you gotta grow thicker skin and look at your art with objective eyes. This is incredibly hard to do, and something that took plenty of practice for me. Hell, I'm still trying to figure this out, but recognizing that my doodles or earlier sketches aren't going to pay my bills is a necessary process that I had to go through. Again, I am not saying that doodling and sketching is bad because it won't bring you money or fans. I think the world would be a better place if we only doodled more. It's such a beautiful form of self-expression, but don't expect those doodles to pay the rent. It's a small, harsh reality to swallow, but also an impetus and challenge for all of us as artists to tap into deeper stories and emotions with our work. And you know what? We need a challenge. We need a push out of our boundaries, and even if you don't quite agree with my thoughts on this, we could maybe reach an agreement that art can be improved when we push ourselves out of our comfort zones. So all in all, please keep on creating your guilty pleasure art for art's sake. Do not ever stop doing that. But if you want to make an impact with your art, think about how your art can compel others to feel a certain way. Would you consider experimenting with different mediums to convey a different story? Would you be willing to look at your art through the eyes of a stranger and detach yourself from it? These are tough questions to answer, and I don't expect you to know the answers right away either. In fact, it took me a very long time to figure it out. But know whatever you create, it's all to help you grow and sharpen your art skills, and most importantly, to express yourself. So what do you think about making art for art's sake? Comment below, let me know. I always love hearing from you, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. So I actually had a lot of fun painting and creating this. I was definitely trying to experiment with my line work and trying to really work out shadows and details and whatnot. I think this was a really great learning process for me, if anything, and I kind of made something that looked sort of pretty, so I guess I kind of won in the end. If you guys like this video, please be sure to give this video a like and to subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button, you know what to do, so that you can see more fun art story times and other fun art related things from me to you in the future. Remember, love yourselves and always have fun with your art. See you all next time. Bye!